This is the Jiu Jitsu Lou podcast with me, Lou Tamlet, coming to you from the UK. When you want to complement your life with a new bunch of friends, start training Jiu Jitsu. You're listening to the Jiu Jitsu Lou podcast, and I'm Lou Tamlet. I'm guessing you're having a good day because either you've been on the mats, you're considering getting on the mats, or you're taking your child to train. I am so happy that you're here listening to this episode. Um, I hope you enjoyed the last episode. Uh, I invite you to stay until the very end. So this episode, I want to talk about my journey and about getting started. So I started out... um, getting onto the mats, not knowing what I was letting myself in for. And I really do believe that this tactic is the best way. Um, I'm happy to have a discussion with any of you, but if you don't know what to expect, then all you can expect is something amazing. So the first session, I stood there in awe, eyes wide open, watching Professor demonstrate self-defense moves and then jujitsu moves and I was kind of like I didn't really know what was going on paired up with um, a training partner going through the moves it all kind of felt quite logical I was able to pick up the moves quite easily and I based that on the basis of me actually knowing how to dance and follow instructions and actually that's one of the skills that I quite like doing Uh, Being able to follow step-by-step guide that I don't actually have to think, um, I can just do. And I think that's that's one of the things with jiu-jitsu. When you start thinking, that's when it all falls to pieces. And I'll talk about um, not my personal competition experience, but others' competition experience, because I was um, at a competition this past weekend. Um, but what I would like to say, um, my new Jiu-Jitsu Lou podcast t-shirt arrived in the post probably about half an hour ago. So um, here I am sporting this new t-shirt. Maybe you can see that, Jiu-Jitsu Lou podcast. Um, so if you're not already following on Instagram at ju.jitsu.lou, um, and uh, yeah, you'll be able to see all of the updates. So getting back to the first session, um, yeah, kind of the experience of learning a move and then training them in sequence and then actually rolling on the mat. And that's where you have a fight with um, other opponents and other people that are training. And goodness me, I did I feel like I'd been battered and bruised that night. I think I came away with the biggest bruise on my arm that I've had in years. Um, Just my my whole physical body didn't feel ready to be um, set up in this way. But, you know, nine months on, um, whilst I still get bruises, I noticed one this morning, actually. um, It's nowhere near, nowhere near as bad, but it's a combat sport. So do expect to receive injuries, kind of, you know, twisted fingers, um, you know, hurty knees. Um, Actually, I remember pulling guard. Now I know what it was that I did in the first session or two, pulling guard, and it felt like I couldn't sit down for ages. The bottom of my back was in agony. Um, I didn't really know what had hit me, to be honest. Um, But anyway, these these injuries um, don't necessarily mean that you stop training. Some of them you do, obviously, you need to look after yourself and recover, but they kind of make make you want to go back and learn more and work out why you had those injuries in the first place. So there I am, and uh, training week in, week out, and I think at the beginning I started doing maybe two times a week, um, and I know there were a couple of extra sessions, so sometimes four, four times. Um, but as I've said before, uh, and obviously if you already train jiu-jitsu, you will know, um, a gi jacket and gi pants and a belt. Um, and whilst, um, yeah, I kind of haven't really alluded to this, there is a ranking system. When you join, you get a white belt. Um, and that's that's with you for a long period of time um, and until such time you kind of 
progress and promoted. And those of you that do train will know that you um, get promoted and there are extra stripes that you earn on your white belt. Um, and when you receive those, sometimes you go, where did that come from? I don't feel ready to be promoted. I don't deserve this. I don't know enough. Um, and I think probably some of you will resonate with the, I feel like I don't know enough. Um, and I know certainly a lot of the people I train with feel this way um, and would rather just stay learning a little bit more. But the decision to for you to be promoted is down to your professor um, and the amount of time and dedication and effort and learning that goes into this. So in terms of a reward system, this is a fantastic way to actually see your progress, that it's not just about you know, turning up week in, week out, um, like with some other sports or activities um, where you don't get your progress measured. So I think that's a really lovely thing to, to see. And actually, when you start having new um, people joining the school, um, like we did in our school this week, uh, and you're rolling with them and training with them, you then realize how much you actually have learned in the time that you've been training. But this episode, I want to talk about uh, a little bit about community. Um, and I, being a, a single parent, um, I've got, uh, I'm running my own business. I've got a number of good friends that I rely on and connect with very regularly, but I don't have a wide family or community group of people. Um, and one of the things that joining jiu-jitsu gave me was this massive community of people. Um, now, I have now begun to learn everybody's names, but my trick is to, at the end, um, you go through and you shake people's hands and there's lots of respect. And um, occasionally, um, some of you might tell me different, um, I get people's names wrong. But that then means that you get to learn their right name <laughs> and they remember you <laughs> for getting it wrong. So uh, Chris or Dave, uh, you know who you are. Um, I, I will get you the right way around. But um, yeah, it, it's just building that community um, of, of people around you. You know, everybody wants the best for everybody else. Um, now, coming on to community, there are a growing cohort of women that, that train on the mats. And my mission, um, as I said before, is really to start to encourage um, more women, your partners, yourselves, to actually get onto the mats and discover what jiu-jitsu can do for you. Um, we went to a competition uh, this last weekend. I went along supporting my fellow um, jiu-jitsu superheroes, and I will call them that because I have utmost respect and regard for these human beings that put themselves in the position of vulnerability getting on the mats. And it really does take someone brave to take that step. I had put myself uh, uh, up for the competition, but didn't end up having an opponent. But I actually got so much joy from being there as a supporter, supporting uh, my friends and, and the other people from our school and kind of, uh, you know, other people. Um, and you s tend to see people competition in, competition out. You'll recognize the names, you'll recognize the, the faces. And it just becomes a huge network um, that you never realized you needed in your life. Um, and I think that's the really important part of jujitsu. They're all there. They all have your back. Nobody really at the beginning knows anybody's life off the mat. We all go on to the training mats completely equal. Um, there are, you know, business owners, there's uh, shop workers, there's counsellors, there's police officers, you know, there's therapists, all sorts of individuals um, that train. And you're all absolutely complete, e kind of equal, even in that space. And that's really humbling um, that you don't know who you're training with. Uh, and that's kind of the fun bit, really. And it's only at these competitions or outside of the training mats in your school that you might get to know these people. 
And I do know that a number of us um, are parents and a number of us also have our children within the school. Um, and it's just a fantastic community to grow and nurture their education, their strength, their resilience and their confidence in, in life um, on the mats and off the mats. Um, their way of learning and thinking just increases and grows. Um, so if you do have children and you'd like them to take part in jiu-jitsu, if they don't already, contact your local jiu-jitsu school, search up who, uh, who offers training and just get them along. There's usually a free um, trial session and go and see what this thing is like. Um, I will say uh, I'm biased, but you'll be better for it um, just to see the confidence uh, and growth and progress in these young humans, let alone your growth and um, resilience and confidence growing in this space. Um, and I know some of you may not have, uh, you know, you might have thought about getting onto the training mats. Um, and if you train um, and your partner doesn't, then, you know, th there's space for them to be part of that um, community. Um, so getting to know everybody, um, eventually learning people's names. Um, I know we in our school, um, we have um, a number of guys that have the same name. So that's not usually a problem. Um, they they their name is actually Ollie. Um, so we have uh, nicknames for all of them. Um, we've got uh, Glasses Ollie, we've got Judo Ollie, and we've got Bluebell Ollie. Um, so at least we can identify them from that perspective. So I kind of want to, you know, uh, name drop from that perspective. Um, okay, so there are some fundamentals um, as well as the community piece that you are not necessarily, uh, you know, it, it gets mentioned on the mats by professor, um, kind of occasionally every now and again, but the gi pants, the gi, um, the gi jacket and the belt all need to be washed after every single, um, session. Now, if you're a parent or if you, you, you've got more than one set of uh, jiu-jitsu uniform to wash, then um, getting it dry is a challenge. They can't go usually go in the tumble dryer because they've got kind of plastic in the lapel. Um, but all of it goes in the wash as soon as you kind of get back so that you know that you've got um, training, uh, training gear for the next session that you want to go to. Um, one of the other things that I've started doing is packing my gi in my car when I go away. Uh, we took some time out um, over the summer and travelled around the UK um, and kind of headed into London um, a couple of months ago. And we were able to drop into another school um, and train there for the evening, which was absolutely fantastic. Um, so always have a gi, gi uh, kind of outfit ready. Um, and one of the other things that I kind of want to mention that I hadn't really appreciated. I had very long hair um, that, that I used to braid or plait um, all the time and a kind of fancy clip in the front of my hair. Um, but now you'll see, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, that I have a very short pixie crop. So from November to um, September, um, my hair has gone through about five different styles of haircut mainly because I train jiu-jitsu and it just makes it easier to manage a style uh, that is really quick and easy. But that also has enabled me to be more vulnerable and the most vulnerable I have ever been in any aspect of my life. You know, sometimes I'll um, go to training and um, not have any makeup on or I've not done my hair. This is unheard of in my whole um, kind of life and career, you know, I'll always go out uh, in looking a certain way or, you know, making sure that, you know, everything's just so. But the vulnerability that jiu-jitsu brings me is incredible. It's been the biggest life shift for me in, in training. 
and um, you know, whilst whilst my my looks have changed, I've lost ten kilos. Um, you know, my hair's getting shorter. I'm making that transition to make the sport work for me. This is the Jiu Jitsu Lou podcast with me, Lou Temlett, coming to you from the UK. Okay, so there are some other tips. Um, I used to have very beautifully manicured nails. I now have the shortest cropped nails ever. But, um, and actually, if you just have a little bit of nail when you're getting your grips in, it really hurts. So there's a benefit. Uh, and the kind of the joke is, um, with people that train jiu-jitsu, we have a pair of nail clippers and that's what we're doing half an hour before we get on the mats. That's exactly what we do half an hour before we get on the mats, trimming toenails and fingernails. So when we're getting our grips in and getting, uh, you know, trying to choke fellow, um, you know, jiu-jitsu superheroes, um, it doesn't hurt us quite so much. Uh, we can inflict however much, um, you know, uncomfortableness on, on others um, in the nicest possible way. Um, so that's it, washing gi and the belt and the belt, it's not a precious thing. Your skill level and ability is not gonna change if you wash the beloved belt. And do you know what? The stripes stay on. There was a little story, one of the, uh, one of my fellow um, jujitsu superheroes, um, their partner put the belt in the wash and thought that um, a number of the stripes had actually been lost in the wash, but actually that individual wasn't as promoted as their partner thought they were. So, <laughs> um, yes, always keep a tab on how many uh, stripes you have just to make sure they don't get lost in the wash, but usually they don't. They're not going anywhere. Your progress and performance are rock solid. Um, so, Talking about the competition at the weekend, um, I was very fortunate to support uh, one of my very favourite training partners, Jareen, who is a Muslim mum of three, and I filmed her, um, put together a little edit um, and shared it on my socials in the last couple of days. Um, and I had to cut out the bit where she was like, no, don't film me, put, put her hand right in front of the camera. But it's a very beautiful um, piece um, just capturing the essence of this very dedicated and committed and competitive human being. Um, you know, who'd have thought? She started um, out jiu-jitsu because her daughter um, started taking part in jiu-jitsu. And she said, well, if I'm doing it, mum, why aren't you? So um, that, was, that was her call to action. It was her invitation to get on the mats. Um, and... Uh, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to continuing to see her progress um, and, um, yeah, seeing seeing how kind of things things play out. But it's just a wonderful space. It's such fun, um, kind of takes the seriousness away. You know, I'm always really happy when I get onto the training mats. I love to be in a space where I'm just learning and dedicated and just learning step by step. Often I'll look a little bit perplexed. And actually, when we're all kind of lined up um, watching Professor, um, you know, teach a move, um, I'm quite short sighted. So actually, I have to put my glasses on um, to be able to see the see the move and what's going on without completely squinting my eyes and getting this divot in my forehead. Um, and I know. Um, Ollie, glasses Ollie, um, in, in our school has to do the same. Uh, we're, we're a couple of the older older students uh, on the mats, but um, that certainly doesn't make up, uh, you know, doesn't make a difference with our learning capability and our experience. So um, the competition, amazing, amazing day. Um, and, you know, winning or losing, um, what they say is, you know, if you don't win, you learn. Um, I love that. It's going to continue to get reeled out over the course of these episodes. Um, but uh, we were able to um, help a, a fellow student and coach get to the competition that day. And uh, me and my kids train a couple of times a week. And we always, always listen to the Barbie album. 
which is a great motivator. My personal favorite is Choose Your Fighter, um, which is a great track. Uh, we also have Speed Drive and a number of other tracks. But that was the, those were the tracks that we listened to on the way to the competition. And Coach Felix did incredibly well claiming his gold. And, uh, you know, he credits that gold to listening to Barbie on the way to the competition. Uh, okay, not completely. He's a very skilled practitioner in jiu-jitsu, but it helped. Anyway, um, moving on. Uh, community is just a great space and experience um, to meet new friends. Uh, and actually, since starting this podcast, I've reached out to a number of people around the world, uh, and it's just growing my network and community. Um, yes, we always talk about what happens on the mats um, and, you know, how easy a, a move was or the challenges we have or, um, you know, even our kind of superhero special moves that each of us have. We've all got one particular move that uh, we have kind of, you know, found our found our niche and uh, particularly good at. Uh, without giving too much away, I have a very strong half guard. Um, anyway, you didn't um, really hear that. Um, if I end up in any competitions anytime soon, and I now have found a way to get out of half guard. So if you'd like to uh, find out more about jiu-jitsu just search up your local jiu-jitsu school and if you're a female out there and you are interested reach out uh, to me contact me via dm you know this is a, a wonderful um, experience to grow your own confidence and well-being and you know your children your partner your friends your family it is just a growing network of us. I've really enjoyed recording this episode um, and I hope you've enjoyed the episode too. Um, if there's anything you'd like to um, see or hear in future episodes, uh, okay, if there's anything you'd like to hear in future episodes, um, I'm still not prepared to do legs overhead uh, on the podcast uh, video, but if there's anything that uh, you think I should be talking about, drop me a line. Um, now, I just want to say that you've all played a part in getting this show to number 64 in the UK Apple podcast charts within the first 24 hours of launch. Now, I would really love it if you could share this episode and previous episodes, um, of which there's a trailer and episode one, with your friends if they have no idea what jiu-jitsu is. Get them to have a listen. I'd love to see this uh, show uh, reaching number 50, at least in the first two weeks of launch. Um, and you can be um, there helping me with this, uh, if you so wish, um, by subscribing to uh, this show on your favorite podcast platform, Apple, Google, Amazon, Spotify, um, and any of the others out there. Um, you can also, if you're not already viewing the video episode uh, on, on YouTube, um, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, and one of the other things that would really, really help me is um, to see your um, five-star review uh, or rating and a comment. Um, this show is, I would love it to get so much bigger and uh Kind of broader in its topic, um, obviously still on the the sense of jujitsu, but I'd love to hear what you want to hear. Um, I will be interviewing a number of guests coming up. Um, I have a, a lady uh, kind of coach from the US that I'm talking with. Um, I'd love to speak with other coaches and uh, people that um, you know are trained and experienced in jiu-jitsu and hear about their stories. I'd love to um, see your uh, five-star ratings, uh, reviews and comments, but remember to subscribe and go and search up your local jiu-jitsu school. If you're traveling around the country or around the world even, and uh, you have packed your gi in your bag, go and find out which schools you can go and join and have a session 
um, so that we don't have to miss out. I've been off the mats for a week um, because I kind of built up to competition training and then um, that didn't happen. But actually, it wasn't quite as bad as all that when I got back on the mats last night. So um, that's it for this episode. Um, I, like I say, I will be interviewing uh, guests uh, coming up on, on future episodes. If you'd love to come and have a conversation with me on this podcast, drop me a line, get in touch. Um, I'd love to hear your story and your anecdotes um, about Brazilian jiu-jitsu. So that's it for now. Oh, no one's come forward to teach me yet. Please drop me a DM and tell me how I should end this episode. Anyway, that's it for now. Thank you for uh, listening and watching. We'll catch you again soon. Bye from Jiu Jitsu Lou.